All right. Welcome again. My name is George Asian, and let's look at how to be an interesting speaker, part two. If you missed part one, this is what we talked about in part one. We said that the first thing you want to learn to do is to understand the power of pictures. The power of pictures. Pictures will make a strong impression on people. You can use slides. That will be fantastic. Make you more engaging, more interesting speaker. We said pictures speak a thousand words. Moving pictures, you can use videos to buttress your points. Speak 10,000 words. And moving pictures speak 10,000 words. And props, actual props, speak um, a million words. We also said another way to engage audiences is to use interesting facts and figures and quotes. And then we said the third way to be an engaging speaker, to be an interesting speaker, is to find your voice. Um, we talked about that, that when you find your voice, you become a very interesting person. To find your voice means to find your purpose, because the purpose of life is a life of purpose. To find your voice is to find your mission, to find your assignment, to find your essence. You know, that's what means to find your voice. To be a soloist. Then we also said that you should... Be, to be interesting, to be an interesting speaker, you must be interested in people, in life, in patterns, and in power. Be interested in people, in life, in patterns, and power. And then, today, we will talk about something very important, which is a very interesting part of being an engaging speaker, and that is to know your audience. So, Audience analysis precedes audience engagement. I often say that audience analysis precedes audience engagement. All what that means is that before you can engage any audience, you've got to know them to a large extent. And we say that when you combine audience analysis with audience engagement, the result is audience appeal. And so when we're evaluating, when I evaluate my students, who speak, I tell them, you want to analyze your audience, know what kind of audience you're dealing with. So we have demographical or demographical analysis, we have um, psychographical analysis, and we have situational analysis. That if you want to know their gender, their age, their occupation, that will inform the stories that you share, the ideas that you share. Sometimes we need to simplify stuff. John Maxwell says that an edu educator takes something simple and makes it complex, but a communicator takes something complex and make it simple. So, and I like the idea because uh, that what how that happens is when you have your demographics right. You know, you sit down. It's part of your pre pre preparation. Your preparation. You're speaking and you just work on the subject matter. You're not thinking about the people you're speaking to. So, like I say, when you're speaking, four things matter in your prep in your preparation. One, your subject is key. But beyond your subject, the kind of audience you're speaking to is also very important. You've got to analyze them, research them. Number three, your purpose, objective of your speaking is also very important. And then number four, also very vital, is your the sequence, the arrangement of your presentation. So how do you become interested? You want to know your audience. You want to analyze them. Do your demographical analysis. Do your psychographical analysis. Are they V decoders? Are they F decoders? Are they um, content driven decoders? Those are things beyond the scope of what I want to share so I don't digress. But analyzing your audience and then engaging your audience subsequently will enable you to be a um, very, very interesting speaker. All right, so know your audience. One of the most audience research is the most important activity a speaker should engage in. And Tony Robbins says that before you can influence others, you must first know what is already influencing them. Before you can influence others, you must know what is already influencing them. And that is so very powerful. So what other ways can you use to, as a speaker to engage your audience? Because we're talking about how to be an interesting speaker. We've looked at many ideas using props using pictures, using moving pictures, finding your voice, being interested so that you can be interested. We talked about um, those, those thoughts, you know, doing your audience analysis, very vital. Another way to become an exciting 
I'm an interesting conversationalist, and not as a conversationalist, an interesting speaker is to spice your speeches with stories. To spice your speeches with stories. And someone says, Oh, where do I get stories from? I'll give you some websites you can go visit as a speaker and you get stories. You can check out google.com. Google will give you, give you interesting stories. You can even change the stories that you have there to Nigerian stories or African stories. Change your names, change your locations, and customize them, tailor them to fit your audience, and so on. So they can relate. You can also go to YouTube. YouTube.com will give you interesting stories. There are many other places you can get stories from and customize them for your use as a speaker. Ginardmethod.com slash resources. G-E-N-A-R-O-D-M-E-T-H-O-D dot com slash resources will give you very, very creative content for your storytelling. S-B-O-Y-D dot com slash slash speaker stories. S-B-O-Y-D dot com slash speaker stories will also give you very interesting content for stories. And then fearlesspresentation.com fearlesspresentation.com slash short stories will also give you very exciting stories to share. All right? So, um, uh, you see, stories are the currencies of every human contact. People may forget all of the details, but they won't forget the stories. Stories are repeated. If you're doing a presentation in front of a bunch of investors or, or, or customers about a particular product. I often recommend that you tell a story, build a business around a story, and you will make a lot of progress. A lot of progress. A lot of progress. So storytelling is very key and vital to your success as a speaker. How dare you speak without a story? You know, and um, so, but the question, I guess you say, George, you're saying, tell a story, tell a story. Okay, very good. Very good. How do I not tell a good story? Right? Is that the question on the back of your mind? Some people will tell stories and the stories will be so long and boring and they disconnect with the audience. You won't be able to tell fantastic stories. So let me just give you five elements of a good story. Five elements that make a good story. Five elements of good storytelling in your presentation. So, number one, is make sure that your story has character. I explain what I mean by that. During the lockdown, I had the privilege of going out, you know, to do stuff. So I'll go out in the morning and then I'll come back in the evening. And I have two lovely daughters and a okay, I didn't have a son at that time. I have two lovely daughters. I have a second daughter by name Michelle. Michelle is a beautiful girl. Got to tell like the mom. Very enthusiastic, very exciting. I love her so much. She's she has the skin of the mom, but my face, she's my second daughter, and I really appreciate her. So one particular day, I came back home, and I was looking tired, exhausted, and I wanted to go, and, you know, there's this the coronavirus thing, the COVID-19 thing was all over the air. There was so much um, news about it, about the need to wash your hands, and so on. So when I got home that day, I was so excited to see her, and, you know, she shouted, Daddy, you know, as so I ran towards her. And I wanted to hug her. And he said, Daddy, stop. Daddy, stop. Haven't you heard that you have to wash your hands first before you touch anybody? And guess what? I stopped. And I said, oh, really? So I went to wash my hands and shank, cleaned my hands very well before I could hug her. So what I just did in that story, I shared a very short story, is that I told the story of my daughter. And if you were following me, you probably imagined my daughter. Right, I gave her character. I entered a conversation with her. You could just literally, uh, and, and the thing is, when you build your character story in your, your presentation, a good story should have the actor and the villain. I mean, the actor and the villain thing has always been there. You know, you have Nollywood exploiting, no, not Nollywood, Hollywood exploiting that. Hollywood, in every movie, we have the actor and the villain. You know, when we're much younger, we say actor and the boss, the boss, you know. so. In every story that will make an impression on any audience, there has to be the actor, the boss, even the good, the bad, you know, kind of dynamic. It will help the story to come out right. 
right? So that's one thing we need to have in your character, your storytelling. Uh, they must have personality, feelings, and humanity. People can be to, should be able to identify and connect with them. So like in the story I just shared, very short story, right? So it had my daughter. And so if I were to ask you who is the villain here, apparently I'm the villain in that context, in that story. And then who is the actor? My daughter. See? So that's how to develop stories. The story must have character. Number two, the story should have dialogue. What does dialogue mean? Dialogue means exchange of conversations. You, you in, in even the story I shared, I, my dad, my daughter talked to me in my story. Okay, I literally mimicked and mirrored my daughter in that storytelling I was sharing. So dialogue inspires the audience imagination. It inspires the audience imagination. Most jokes are based on dialogue. You see any um, comedian? Most of them. Their jokes are based on that on dialogue, and then you also notice that um, dialogues in a story reveals the creativity of the speaker. If you're a good speaker, and you know how to use dialogue, you see how good a speaker you are. And another thing that must another element of a good story is that there has to be action, movement, and drama. There has to be action, movement, and drama. Don't just tell a story for a story's sake. Let there be some little bit of activity. Like in the case of my story, my daughter was the, you know, said, Daddy, don't hug me. So there was some kind of action, some kind of activity um, in that story. And a bit of suspense will make a good story have a stronger bite. A bit of suspense and, of course, your punchline, your point. There has to be a point, right? There has to be a morale. There has to be a lesson. There has to be a philosophy. Storytelling is powerful. It's a currency of every human contact. People repeat stories and it will make, you a lot, make a lot of sense. Let's look at another point. Another way to be very engaging is when you speak, be passionate. Passion persuades people. The, the excitement of any audience is the enthusiasm the speaker displays on stage. You want to be enthusiastic about your subject. You want to speak from the point of conviction and not just talk, but speak from the point of conviction. So enthusiasm is vital and key to success as a speaker. So passion persuades, passion persuades, use passion to, um, to make your audience more engaged. You will feel the passion, you should feel the passion in your voice. See it in the way you move your body on stage. Another very interesting thing that you should do is sprinkle humor and jokes in your presentation. Now, if you can, if you can, sprinkle humor and jokes in your presentation. Not everybody's good in doing humor and joke. I, I think that when it comes, as a rule, for me, um, I allow humor to come to me. I don't go to humor. I don't deliberately try to be funny in my presentation. I rarely ever try to do that. I don't deliberately try to be funny. I just allow humor to come. When it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I just do my thing. All right, but if you're good at that, and there are some folks who are good at that, who just know how to, you know. So you sprinkle it. And I think the easy way to get people to laugh about your subject matter is to tell a story about yourself. Some failure experience, some mishap, something that you should have done better that you didn't do well. And people will love you for that. Humor is mankind's greatest blessing, Mark Twain said. Mark Twain says humor is mankind's greatest blessing. So let's look at another last two points, the last two points on how you can be an interesting speaker, part two. I think this is very engaging. Engage in a conversation with your audience. How about that? Don't just speak to your audience or speak at your audience, speak with your audience. To speak to your audience is presentation. To speak with your audience is interaction. You want to be more, you want to involve the audience in that conversation. You don't just want it to be a presentation. You want it to be a conversation. And you can start off presenting, but along the line, you know, give your audience the lead for them to respond to you or to interact with you while you are doing the presentation. You're not taking away, you're not moving into um, 
a question and answer session no you're just doing so sometimes you're just breaking the norm and then getting them to talk to you respond to you or doing an illustration with somebody or, or getting the person to stand up and talk with you that is what makes you a powerful engaging stimulating and interesting speaker and you can do that and then finally how do you interest any audience you want to dress to impress dress for the occasion people will first see you before they hear you people will first see you before they hear you so be careful about how you dress dress for the occasion dress dress to impress dress for the occasion people will first see you before they hear you and dressing about dressing is that dressing also adds confidence to you and for some people who have confidence issues one of the ways to diminish and to boost your confidence is to dress well for the occasion if i have a presentation to do anywhere I very often very often i will dress my best i look my best i look very well very good and that way i would have the confidence that i need and because i have confidence and it's reflecting in my body my body language my appearance and there's a congruency of the quality of the message congruency with the quality of a message i'm sharing i would naturally influence people who are there they say wow this guy looks good and he speaks well so guys those are a few ideas i've shared with you about how to interest an audience go out there in your next presentation and take into cognizance these things i've shared so let me go over a few of them for those of you who didn't follow from the beginning from the part one the first thing is the power of pictures if you can use pictures use slides use slides to present and i said that pictures are in dimensions we have still pictures we have moving pictures and we have props still pictures are pictures you know just there it's like moving pictures videos and props are the actual object bringing the actual object to the presentation will help you said number two use quotes interesting figures and stars and if you followed my train of thought i gave you seven websites to go and visit number three we should have been number one by the way find your voice find your message your essence your assignment and you will naturally be exciting and interesting every time you speak it will just resonate with the people the fact that this man is talking from the standpoint of conviction number four be interested to be interesting to be interested in what interested in life in people in patterns and in power those are called those are the core pillars every speaker or any individual should be interested in people life patterns and power and then we said that you also want to do audience analysis audience analysis is another way to be an engaging speaker demographical analysis psychographical analysis and situational analysis those things will make you an engaging speaker do your analysis of your audience because when you do analysis of an audience and then you engage the audience it results to audience appeal so audience analysis plus audience engagement equals audience appeal i hope you got that then we also said that you should learn how to tell good stories learn how to tell good fantastic stories stories will put you um, will make you very exciting and I just talked about the five elements of good storytelling and then our um, other things we looked at today we said you've got to be passionate about what you are doing very important to sprinkle humor if you can in your presentation and then said engage in a conversation with your audience which is very vital and then we concluded by saying that you need to dress to impress I hope this makes sense if you're watching this on YouTube and you love what you hear you want to get more quality videos like this click on the subscribe button and you get to follow me and get more information for free like this and you can get notifications of the videos every time I post them on YouTube by clicking on the notification button and you're good to go my name is George ACN I am your life coach motivational speaker and peak performance consultant I will see you some other time. God bless.